Michael gets a little bit of company. In this video, we're going to be going back and having a look again at the Trick or Treat Studios 1978 Michael Myers, to which I've already had a look at this figure and still very, very happy that I was able to pick this one up and add it to my collection. People have still been on the fence as to whether this was the definitive Michael that they wanted to pick up. And again, I just want to express the fact that the figure for being $120 the fact that you're getting the head sculpt that you are and the coveralls, I think is the price of admission right there. Whether you feel the need to want to change the body down the road or if you're going to keep the stock body that was already underneath the coveralls, I still think bang for your buck. The stuff Trick or Treat is putting out at $120 for this guy is still unbelievable. Now, Obviously, as a follow up to that video, one thing that I did get a lot of questions about from you, the viewing audience, is how does Michael Myers stack up? We say some of the other six scale figures that we've gotten over the years. So that's what this video is all about. We're going to be looking at the Michael Myers and comparing him with, say, some of the other six scale figures that both 3.0 and Sideshow Collectibles have produced and released over the years. One thing I did want to go back to and talk about for Michael Myers is certainly still a big fan of this figure. I did take the liberty, as per many requests, and put the collar up. When I did do the review, I had the collar down for the majority of the review and for my own personal displays, I always keep the collar up for my Michael Myers. I just kept it down for some strange reason during that review, but I still absolutely love this figure. And based again on the fact that it's price point, I think it's definitely something that you guys should really consider, seriously consider picking up before this guy sells out. This is going to be one of those figures, if you ask me, that people are going to kick themselves over years later that they didn't pick this guy up at the price that he was being asked for. Anyways, though, I've already spent a lot of time discussing my feelings of the figure, and I've also read a lot of comments that you guys have made about this particular figure. You guys can also certainly weigh in on your own personal opinions and whether this guy is worth the pickup, or if you guys would like to wait and get the sideshow release. Again, I almost feel like this one is going to be the underdog that's going to really impress people once that Sideshow one gets released. But we won't certainly know what the Sideshow is going to look like until that one actually comes out. Again, really one of the things that you guys continually asked me after the review in social media, on Facebook especially, is how this guy looked with some of the other figures that I've been collecting over the years. And again, that's exactly what this video is all about. Now, I'm not really sure who on social media first made this recommendation, but as somebody that has just recently picked up the Mezco MDS Michael Myers, in fact, I just did a review of it if you guys want to check it out, one of the things that they suggested that they use for a displaying option when it comes to this Michael Myers is, in fact, the pumpkin that came included with the MDS Michael. And again, you guys probably have just seen a review of this posted on this channel. This, I feel, is, again, an ideal, and I mentioned it even in that review, Really an ideal accompanying piece to be displayed with your Michael Myers. And obviously I figured I would bring this in and show you guys just how that scaled up. Tots apparently is planning on doing an accessory pack, but until that time comes, and we can only hope that a pumpkin would be part of that mix. In the meantime, I'm most definitely going to be displaying my Michael Myers with this pumpkin. The one that came included with the MDS Michael Myers from Mezco Toys. So if you do actually have that Michael Myers and you do pick yourself up the Tots Michael Myers, by all means, maybe take this recommendation and display him with it. Now, just to kind of give you an idea of how it looks to Michael Myers, I'm just going to kind of put up to his head. I think that's a pretty good size for a pumpkin. I mean, notably, I think the pumpkin in the movie is just a tad bit higher. It's not as squat as this one. But I definitely think it fits the bill until we get one that fits properly with the Tots Michael Myers. So I'm just going to put it right there, just to kind of give you guys an ongoing idea. If you do want to scale it accordingly with that, Michael. Some of the figures, of course, we're going to be bringing in are probably all the things that you probably would be expecting to see what uh, Michael Myers displayed with. I don't know whether, I guess the obvious one would be, seeing as we don't have many Michael to be released. There was, in fact, yes, the Sideshow Collectibles re release of Michael Myers years ago. I never did pick up any of those figures. I may consider possibly, possibly getting the idea of getting some of the Jason Voorhees, 
because we don't have a lot of Jason Voorhees, but that old Michael Myers was terrible. I never did pick that up, but I did, however, just move him into the middle here. One comparison I'm sure you guys will want to see is how Michael Myers from the 3.0 release, this happens to be the curse of Michael Myers, how does it stack up with the new Tots Michael? Uh, Shoulder-wise, I will award it to 3.0 being a bigger, stockier looking Michael. The head sculpts are quite considerably different as well. Again, we'll just uh, pick up the Michael here from Tots, and we'll pick up the Michael Myers from the 3-0. And you can put them side to side like so. I will admit, 3-0's Michael perhaps hasn't aged well. And uh, seeing how well Trick or Treat has done their Myers, I hope certainly we're going to be eventually seeing a curse Michael Myers. Because if it's, that's the case, I may find myself maybe retiring this figure. Don't get me wrong, I really do like The Curse of Michael Myers as one of my favorite looks for Michael. But I do feel, admittingly, like this head sculpt, even at the time I first picked this head sculpt up, this particular figure, I never felt like really it captured the best likeness for Michael Myers. And again, when you see the two side by side, yes, even though the 3 0 release of Myers did have rooted hair, which was one of the debated topics when it came to the 3 0 release, 3 0 instead opted to go plastic. And I'm perfectly, perfectly fine displaying him with a plastic hair. I mean, especially when you have certain lighting. And if you have this guy in a low lit situation, I mean, it's really hard to see that this guy has rooted hair. But again, the difference between the two. So I'll just put Michael Myers here from 3-0. And again, we'll put the Tots Michael Myers side to side. Just so that you guys can see the difference in height and the build of the two figures. When it, looking at the 3-0 again, when I'm now comparing it to the regular released 78 Myers, I can't help, help but also notice how much excessive, unnecessary things were added to the coveralls on 3-0's release. The unnecessary browns at the bottom of his of his coveralls. The unnecessary red streaks. You probably can see it right here in the waist area in the arms. Just really bog down this figure with unnecessary colors that didn't need to be there in the first place. Of course, another big figure I'm sure you guys would want to see him compared to. And that is the Sideshow Collectibles, Jason Voorhees. One of the bigger guns, I suppose, released. And still questionable as to... Whether that is a definitive Jason Voorhees, Sideshow Collectibles, of course, went with more their inspired idea of what um, a Jason Voorhees could look like. This one is supposed to be pulled from part three, and yet really a lot of the colors, especially the colors in his mask, don't quite gel with the way that uh, Jason Voorhees looks in the film. But it is the closest thing that we've gotten short of going the route of customs. I have always entertained the idea of getting a custom, but then when I really factor in how how much these things would cost, the prices of these figures, uh, normally customs could go anywhere from $500 to $2,000. And me here in Canada, I would have to add another third the cost on top of that. So just doing a ballpark idea, $500, even a $1,000 figure, probably could be closer for me to being about $1,350 or $1,400. I really don't have the price to be able to, I don't have the the amount to be shelling out to get a custom pieces. And while again, I'm you collect custom figures by all means, follow that passion. But for me, it's just, it's too expensive the route to be going. And I just don't have the kind of funds available. If I was only collecting just the six scale figures and just specifically, if I was just collecting the horror figures, then yeah, I could probably set aside funds and, you know, just collect those. But because I'm collecting all so many other things that you'll see on this channel, it just gets awfully expensive to start going down the rabbit hole of custom collecting. Just in case you are you are curious, let's just pick up the two Jason Voorhees. Because I, I did want to do as much of a comparison on these as I possibly could. A closer look at what the 78 Myers looks like next to the, uh, the Sideshow Collectibles Jason Voorhees. And again, I think they scale well enough together. You could maybe award there's a little more detailing done to Jason's neck than Michael Myers. But again, based on the build of this character, it does make some sense, obviously, that Jason's going to have a little more detailing on his neck. We'll just move over the 3-0 Michael Myers. I'm going to try my best to kind of keep all of these also in frame. Another comparison we can also bring in, another big hitter. And again, another disappointing release from Sideshow Collectibles is obviously the Freddy Krueger. Now, this Freddy Krueger, if you've seen my already my reviews of this guy, 
I think I've now done two reviews of, there we go, Freddy Krueger getting to stand properly. I've had real, a whole list of problems that I've had with this figure. A lot of people have also had problems with really loose torso, which I'm noticing a lot of that on mine. My torso on Freddy Krueger is extremely loose. I'm considering the idea of actually just taking the sweater off and seeing if there's a way to kind of add some additional glue or something to the joint. Maybe tighten that up a bit, maybe a bit of floor polish as well, just so I can tighten it up a lot better than what it actually is. Because, I mean, obviously that is the smallest of the problems with this figure. The fact that he doesn't have a removable fedora is a big one. The fact that his head sculpt really does lack necessary paint is also a big problem with this figure. A lot of real issues when it came to the Freddy Krueger. A big argument as to why I still think, if anybody would say the superior figure of the 78 Myers will, will be the Sideshow Collectibles, I really do sort of direct them the route of looking at the Freddy Krueger, where we sort of were teased by that before. We were wronged by that before. Ooh, I just quickly caught him. Wronged by that before, where a figure looked good in pr production and promo stills, but then we eventually saw the figure in person, how much of a letdown Freddy Krueger is. I really hope that's not the case. And I hope it's going to be a much better figure when we get finally the Myers release. But I don't know. I'm still on the fence as to whether I still think it's going to be a better figure overall than the one that we got from Trick or Treat Studios here. Going, though, back to the topic of 3-0, another figure that they had released under their horror banner. Not really something that they expanded much of either. We only got a couple of figures under that line. Is another figure is, of course... Leatherface, we can bring him in right now. Well, Leatherface is a considerably bigger figure. Bigger in build because he's going to be using that rubber overlaid skin. He had it all across his forearms, for example. And I'm sort of not sure how I feel completely about the long-term longevity of these seamless bodies. I always feel like it's something that's going to crack. It's not the case yet on this figure, but I hope that that's not going to be the case moving forward. Now, again, going back to Sideshow Collectibles, we are going to be getting ourselves a Leatherface, the Pretty Lady Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1, with two different looks. We still don't have like a definitive Ultimate Jason, Ultimate Leatherface look, because we are going to be getting the Grandma Mask, as well as we are going to be getting the Pretty Lady Mask. What we aren't going to be getting, though, is a regular Leatherface. I'm sort of confused why they didn't go the route of giving us just a regular released Leatherface with perhaps a grandma face and have a pretty lady release of, of Leatherface coming out down the road. But uh, this is basically just based on the 3-0 release here is based on sort of they're inspired by the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and how Leatherface looked. Again, it's debatable. I mean, it's sort of their, it's their opinion of what their Leatherface could potentially look like. Sort of kind of, for me, looks more like Leatherface from the Mortal Kombat 10 game. I got one little lone hair here on the side. But we're going to put him next to Michael Myers. Again, to give you guys an idea of how the TOTS 78 Myers stacks up. And seeing as we're already, again, talking about the 3-0 releases, 3-0 also did themselves a pinhead, which I think is only the last, it is the last, I think, of the horror figures that 3-0 approached. They gave us a Myers, they gave us a Leatherface, and of course they gave us a pinhead. And the pinhead's not bad. There are issues, of course, with the padding of his costume being a little too puffy. I still think I could go in there and probably customize that. Maybe find, I don't know if I would take the pad. There's no real padding underneath that. But I wonder if I could actually pin back the sides of his costume so it looks a little bit more form-fitting. I do think like the Mezco uh, taller pinhead has a better likeness to the one produced by 3-0. But to be fair, 3-0 did give us actual pins in his head. Now, those are real metal pins, too, so I can't really knock them completely because I did like the way that that one turned out. Another figure we can bring in for some size comparisons, and actually this one's a bit alarming when you see how big of a difference in height this one is. This one was the QMX release of The Nun. Now, when I had done the review of The Nun, the one thing I didn't do was a size comparison. And I guess this sort of served as a perfect opportunity to do a size comparison with how this one looks and stacks up with the rest of the six scale figures. I think she's way too short. I don't even recall if I had said that in the review, but I'm certainly saying it right now. The nun is definitely too short of a figure. She should have been a lot taller. I'm not really sure what I could really do to it. I could probably put her in a longer body. The thing about it though, is the outfit, the habit that she wears wouldn't be long enough. So of course there would be more of her legs showing down below. 
but she's definitely too short of a figure. She's way too short, not only compared next to Michael Myers, but also compared to the rest of the figures I have in my horror collection. And for fun, one last figure that we can bring in, another figure that I proudly put on display here, is the Sideshow Collectibles Evil Dead Ash. I still like this figure, still like this figure quite a bit. Yes, there are things, truthfully, that could have been changed to the figure, primarily as its head sculpt. I do feel like Sideshow Collectibles perhaps played things a little bit too safe when it came to his head sculpt, that I think they could really have given him a much more exaggerated head sculpt. His head is also quite a bit longer, too. Some of the lo one of the longest head sculpts, I think, of all the six-scale figures I have in my collection. Uh, I don't know if down the road we may get ourselves another Sideshow Collectibles Evil Dead Ash in sort of a way I hope that we do. I feel like this was a good starting point, but I think where they've come now when it comes to designing figures, there's definitely, I think, room for improvement when it comes to a better-looking Ash six-scale figure. But this is just a couple of comparisons Certainly, you guys had asked me after I posted the review of the Tots Michael Myers, wanted to know how it stacked up with, say, some of the other six-scale figure horror figures that we've gotten, I guess, over the years, because it's been a couple of years that I've been collecting these. And I did definitely wanted to follow up this that that those questions. I wanted to follow it up with a video fully showing you guys how Michael Myers here from the Trick or Treat Studios does stack up with some of the other figures. Some of these figures, admittingly, I think do now show their age. And I think there is a, a good opportunity for a lot of these companies, I guess specifically now Sideshow, as they're going to be doing the Pretty Lady Leatherface. We are going to be getting the Ghost Face. And of course, we are going to be getting the 78 Myers. I'm hoping perhaps they are the company that's going to run forward with the idea of giving us more six scale uh, horror figures. I mean, again, there's definitely opportunity between Tots, what they're doing with their exquisites, Michael Myers figures, only basing it, of course, from the only 78 release that we've gotten so far. But, I mean, between Tots helming the Halloween franchise, and then, of course, Sideshow sort of doing the rest and picking up the slack with the other horror figures, I'm hoping we will finally now start seeing a golden age of six-scale horror figure collecting. Um, of course, if you guys are still waiting to get your Michael Myers, this was also one of the videos I did definitely want to follow up with, really giving you guys a good idea of how the Tots Michael Myers stacks up with the other horror figures that have been released by two other companies, 3-0 and Sideshow Collectibles. If you have managed to pick up finally your Michael Myers or finally it's been delivered to your door, let me know down below in the comments section whether you guys like the figure or not. I always like reading your comments, whether it be against the opinions that I have if you have similar opinions, I always like to be able to discuss collecting with you guys. And one of the main reasonings why I do these videos in the first place, it's to be able to share the passion that I have for these things with collectors that have similar passions out there. But let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the 78 Myers. And if you cer certainly would like to see more comparison videos, I would always be on board the idea of doing more comparison videos, especially when it comes to horror figures. Because you know, Horror figures and me go hand in hand. And yes, in case anybody was wondering, I do display my Michael Myers with the popped collar. A couple of people had said, dude, you need to pop that collar. I know, I know. I didn't pop the collar as much as I should have popped that collar when initially I had to look at the 78 Myers. Uh, if you are new to this channel and liking the content you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below, turning, of course, that bell notification on down below as well, so that when you get those friendly reminders, you'll know when new videos pop up in this channel. And of course, I can follow that up as well by letting you guys know Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when you'll find new videos sprouting up on this channel. And between these comparison videos and regular reviews, there's definitely going to be a lot of stuff coming your way. So as always, keep your peepers peeled. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.